Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly size your mini split system. Sometimes people tend to undersize and oversize their mini split because they think that it's a modulating system and they can handle both. While that is true, it is still important to somewhat be within a range of what your room or your house is requiring. So if you undersize or if you oversize, you might not get the performance that you're expecting from your system. So today we're going to be talking about how to properly size your mini split system so you get the exact performance that you're expecting. So let's get started. Now, one thing to know before we jump into determining the size of systems is we have to define what a BTU is. You'll see that in your research on the internet, uh, maybe our site and our channel. A BTU stands for British Thermal Unit. And now that is just a unit of measurement that is used to determine how much heat to remove and to give in order to condition a space. So anytime you see BTU, it is used for sizing mini splits. Some of the main Factors to consider when sizing your mini split are the width, length, and the height calculations of the room or space you're conditioning. Number two is the number of exterior glass fixtures you have in the room, whether that's uh, windows, uh, exterior doors, sliding doors, where there is heat loss. Number three is the number of people that you expect to be in that space or room. And number four, is the insulation level, whether it's bad insulation, no insulation, or the best insulation, that range. And the last is where that room or space is located relative to the rest of the house. Is it the basement? Is it the first floor? Is it the second floor? All these things do make a difference. So these are the main factors to consider when sizing your mini split. So the main factor to consider when calculating BTUs or the size of your mini split is the square footage, the width, length, and height of your room. That is the crux of sizing. You have to know the space that you're conditioning in order to determine the size. The other factors like windows, insulation, where the room or space is located relative to the house, all those are supportive factors that can add or subtract to that BTU calculation. Now, if you have a traditional room, maybe let's say a 12 by 12 bedroom, it's very simple to take the calculation of the width and length. Now, if you have a irregular shaped room, like an L-shaped room or something like that, you could take the average square footage and use that for your measurements. But if you wanna get more detail, you can always call us and we can look at your drawings or your blueprints and suggest different sizing based on exactly the shape that you have in your room. Another factor to consider is the number of windows that you have and the size of the windows or doors. And that's because you can lose heat or gain heat through those windows or doors. So let's just say you have a sunroom that's 12 by 12. You can't just measure and size the mini split based on that dimension. You have to consider how many windows are in the sunroom. If all the walls are consisted of windows, then you're gonna have a lot of sun exposure in that sunroom and therefore will have to size your mini split accordingly. Every person omits heat. Whether you're sitting down and watching TV, you could be omitting 200 to 250 BTUs. Or if you're running, or exercising, you could be omitting up to 400 BTUs. So obviously this does make a difference if you're trying to cool or heat a room. Insulation is a critical factor to consider when sizing a mini split. Everything has an R value. So if you're looking at the walls of what's surrounding the space you're trying to condition, you could look at it and say, okay, I have brick and I have plaster and combined, it could be an R value of Two, compared to a new construction that by code probably has an R value of 19 or above. So if you're considering those two different scenarios, you're gonna size your mini split accordingly. So location of the space that you're trying to condition is really important. If you're comparing a basement that might be 
partly underground is not going to get as much exposure to the sun and the elements compared to a second story bedroom that might get really hot in the middle of the day because the windows have a lot of sun exposure. So you're going to condition those spaces much differently. A few other things to consider when sizing your mini split are considering whether you have appliances or other structural infiltrations in the room. For example, if you're in the kitchen and you're si trying to size a mini split for the kitchen and you know you have an oven as well as an exhaust fan, those things are going to omit heat and you have to account for that. Another factor to consider is whether the room or space you're trying to condition is adjacent to another conditioned space. So for example, let's say you have an addition that you built off of your house. Now that addition is unconditioned, but it's attached to the main house that is supported by your main central system. So you know that some of the air from that main house is going to seep into that new addition and so you can be more conservative with your sizing in the addition. So sizing a single room is fairly simple. You know that if you have an 18,000 BTU indoor, your outdoor unit is also going to be 18,000 BTUs. Now what if you want to connect multiple indoor units for multiple rooms to one outdoor unit? How do you size the outdoor unit? Well, you start by sizing the indoor units and then you add up those calculations to whatever the outdoor unit size will be. So let's look at an example. Let's say you have three bedrooms and each bedroom requires a 6,000 BTU indoor unit. The first bedroom, the second bedroom, and the third bedroom are all 6,000 BTUs. You wanna connect them all to one outdoor. So you add all those 6,000 BTU units up together and you get 18,000 BTUs. Now each manufacturer has different sizing and different zoning for each outdoor unit that they make. Well, let's look at an example like Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi makes a two zone 20,000 BTU outdoor unit. You know that you only have 18,000 that you need, but you have three zones. So that outdoor unit won't fit. The next option is a 24,000 BTU outdoor unit, but it's for three zones. So you know you have three zones and you need 18,000, so you're gonna go with the three zone 24,000 BTU outdoor unit connecting to the three 6,000 BTU indoor units that are for your spaces. Professionals use the variables and factors we talked about today, as well as a bunch of other factors to try to narrow down and pinpoint the BTU calculation for a project that they're working on. Since ductless is a modulating technology, you do not need all the factors in the world. You just need the major ones that we talked about today to get to a calculation that will get you a mini split that will perform perfectly for your space. So we create a simplified calculator where you can take the data that you have on your room, punch it into the calculator and get a calculation for the size that you need for your space to properly heat and cool it. Click on the link below in our description and it'll take you directly to our calculator where you can get started and get a size for your mini split system. We hope this video helps you in trying to narrow down how to calculate and size your mini split for your project. If you have any questions at all, we have professionals on standby ready to answer your questions, review blueprints and files, and help you get the mini split sizes that you need for your project. If this video helped you in any way, please support us by clicking the subscribe button, the like button, or if you wanna stay tuned for more videos and you wanna be reminded, hit that bell button. That'll really help us create more content in the future and help more people like you that wanna learn more about Douglas. And of course, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.